essentially two options when it comes to working with color profiles inside of Photoshop. You have the choice of either assigning a color profile to an image or converting to a color profile, both of which are two entirely different uh, processes that you really need to understand before actually utilizing them. So in front of me, currently I have what is called a Granger rainbow. Now this essentially includes all the colors that you'd find in the RGB spectrum, the red, green, and blue color gamut, right from the highlights at the top of the image, graduated down to the blacks at the bottom of the image. Now this is really quite useful for um, essentially comparing color profiles. So I'm gonna utilize it for a little bit of this actual tutorial and then I'm going to actually show you some of the different gamut sizes of the color uh, working space profiles that you're going to come in contact with and then we'll actually look at one specific technique of using color profiles to actually increase or decrease your chroma or saturation of an image. So to start out with, if we go up to edit, you'll actually find assign and convert to profile right down the bottom of this particular drop down menu. So what essentially is the difference between assigning a profile and converting to a profile? So let's actually take a look at assign profile. Now assigning a profile lets you tag an image with a specific profile or untag an image by removing its profile. So it doesn't actually change any of the color values of an image, but instead it actually changes how those color values are interpreted through a color profile. Now a great analogy of assigning a profile is to think about it in terms of a looking glass. Now if you were to look at an identical image with 10 different looking glasses, and each of the looking glasses had a different color gamut, you'd essentially see 10 different color variations of the same photograph. So that's sort of a simplified version of thinking about how assigning a profile works. But if you take a look at the assigned profile um, dialog box, you'll notice that you have three options. You can choose to don't color manage this document, or you can uh, actually choose to work with the existing RGB uh, color profile that's assigned to the image or you can choose to actually assign a color working space profile. So ordinarily if you come in with an image that's untagged and it doesn't have an embedded color profile you can actually come in here and assign one to it. Now when you actually assign color profiles you'll notice the difference here is without me actually at the moment if I set it to don't color manage this document. You notice down the bottom it says untagged. So there's no color profile currently with this image. So it hasn't been converted to anything and all the color values are pure. But if I actually assign a particular color profile, you'll notice that it increases the um, visual representation of saturation in the image. So as I just preview that, you'll notice that it changes quite considerably. So you can actually choose to assign a variety of different profiles. Ordinarily, you're going to be assigning color working space profiles, which would be uh, sRGB, which is a smaller profile. Uh, then you can choose to actually assign something such as Adobe RGB, which is slightly larger than sRGB, and it has um, slightly uh, more green in this particular profile and then you can choose to uh, assign something that's quite large such as pro photo rgb where that really does emphasize the difference in um, the size of the actual profile just by assigning that now we're going to actually take a look at the particular sizes of these profiles with regards to their color gamut so you can get some idea of how uh, some idea of their relationships between each other. So that's essentially assigning a color profile and ordinarily you really want to stick with those three that I mentioned. So what's the difference between that and actually converting to a profile? So let's cancel that and we'll go now back up to edit and we'll scroll down the bottom here to convert to profile. So what's the difference between assigning a profile and converting to a profile? Well, as the name suggests, convert to profile actually allows you to convert an existing image to another profile 
where you actually have full control over how the conversion is actually processed. Now with convert to profile, you're actually changing the color values of an image, which is primarily determined by the uh, actual color profile that you choose and the rendering intent that you choose for the conversion. Now you'll notice inside the convert to profile window that we had the source space, the destination space, and the conversion options. So the source space is currently what my image has been converted to and what we're working in. The destination space is the color profile we want to actually convert our image to. And the conversion options are essentially how you can actually control the conversion process. Now, ordinarily for a digital workflow, you'd have a raw conversion um, inside of say camera raw and you convert to a working space, which you'd often choose a larger working space in order to try and retain all the color information from the original raw file. So it would convert to that working space, which in most cases is either going to be Pro Photo RGB or Adobe RGB. Then what happens is you can actually choose to convert down in size uh, if you wish, and that could be in relation to a working space such as sRGB or in relation to a output profile such as one you'd use for a printer and paper surface. Uh, so you normally start from the largest color gamut and work your way down according to um, how you're actually uh, going to be outputting your file. So you don't normally actually convert your profile from a sm smaller working space to a larger working space because you, you're not actually going to be increasing the amount of color values in the image because you've gone from a smaller to a, a larger working space so it doesn't quite balance out. Now when it comes to the conversion options for converting to a profile, you want to leave the engine set to Adobe ACE. You don't want to muck around with that at all. The most important aspect of your conversion options is actually your rendering intents, from which you have four to choose from. You have perceptual, saturation, relative color metric, and absolute color metric. Now the two that I recommend that you stick to are perceptual and relative color metric. I recommend that you leave saturation and absolute color metric completely alone. Um, for photographic images, they're just not right, right? So don't touch those ones at all. So now, perceptual aims at actually preserving the visual relationship between colors so that it's perceived as being natural to the human eye, even though, those are, even though those color values themselves may change, which is one of the reasons that this intent is most commonly used for photographic images, especially with lots of outer gamut colors. Whereas relative color metric actually compares the, high, the extreme highlights of the source color space to that of the destination color space and then shifts those colors accordingly. So outer gamut colors are shifted to the closest reproducible color inside the new destination profile. So relative color metric actually preserves more of the original colors in, uh, in an image than that of perceptual. So I'm going to actually try and attempt to do a diagram of perceptual and relative color metric for you now in order just to help you better understand how they actually work with regards to conversion. So let's now go ahead and just cancel this for a second. I'm going to open, actually what, I, what I'll do is I'll just quickly go and add a new fill layer and we'll make it completely white. So if I was to sketch out a bird's eye view of how both of these rendering intents actually work, it would look something like a triangle. So what I'm going to do is just add another layer here to actually draw on. So I'm going to get my paintbrush and we're going to draw a triangle. And that's going to represent your source working space. So you'll have your three points, which will be your RGB. So your red, green, and blue points. And essentially, you're going to be converting most of the time to a smaller color profile, be it that of a working space or that of an output profile for a printer or a paper surface. And what you'd have is you'd have a smaller profile that would actually sit inside, in most cases, inside of the larger working space profile that you're utilizing. Now, with perceptual as a rendering intent, the way it actually works is that it will maintain the color relationships of 
the color values as it actually remaps them to the new color destination space. So as you can see here, I've added several different color values. What will happen with Perceptual when it actually does the conversion is it remaps them inside the new destination where, uh, color profile, but it keeps all those um, color values and their relationships the same uh, so it looks identical just within a smaller profile like, like so. But whereas with relative color metric, it actually works quite different. So with relative color metric, it leaves all of the uh, color values that are actually inside the new destination profile. So that'll be everything within inside this current profile, inside the smaller profile at the moment. It leaves all of that untouched. But with regards to all of the colors that sit outside that destination profile, which would be these color values here, what it does instead of uh, the way that Perceptual works is it will remap all of these to the very edges, the outskirts of the new destination profile, and it will essentially drop all of those color values on top of each other. So in some cases, you will want to utilize relative color metric, but in most cases, you probably want to utilize perceptual if you want to keep all your color values and their relationships accurate. So now let's quickly just jump back to the um, convert to profile window. Now what you'll see underneath the rendering intent is that you have the option to actually choose to utilize the black point compensation. Now this is something that you really want to leave checked most of the time because this ensures that your shadow detail uh, of the image is preserved and it essentially will simulate sort of the full dynamic range of the output device. So sometimes if you actually turn this on and off, you'll notice a big difference, especially if you're actually converting to an output profile, for example, where there may be a, a much smaller um, color gamut from which to work with, and the blacks may not be um, quite, quite right, especially with, um, say, fine art papers when you're printing on inkjets or canvases where they have a much flatter black than that of something of a uh, photographic print, for example. You then have the option of actually specifying whether you want to use dither. Now, dither controls whether um, your colors are actually dithered when you actually convert to an 8-bit channel um, between color spaces. So most of the time you'll leave this selected. So that's essentially um, how you actually go about converting to a new color profile and that's the differences between assigning a color profile and actually converting to a color profile. Now let's take a look at some diagrams of some actual um, color working spaces to give you some idea of how these actual color spaces overlap. So this is a representation of essentially the human um, vision. So if I can get the magnification to sort of sit correct. So this is a representation that was created in 1931. It's a um, representation of the human uh, visual color gamut. And once again, it's obviously a um, bird's eye view, not a 3D representation. Now you'll notice here on this one up the top here that this is for sRGB and it has a white point that sits at um, 6,500 Kelvin, which is quite a warm white. But when you compare it to something like a Adobe RGB, you'll notice here that you've actually got a lot more green, so it actually comes out further up here than that of sRGB. So you, you have a lot more greens and cyans in your image than that of sRGB. So primarily I like to utilize uh, Adobe RGB when working with images. But some people like to work with larger working spaces. Now, I've done quite a fair bit of work with larger working spaces, but it really depends on the output medium that you intend on going to. Because if you look down the bottom here at Pro Photo RGB, you'll notice that it is an extremely large working space profile, and it actually extends outside that of the color gamut of the human vision. So there's colors there that we can't even see that are actually inside that profile. 
Um, so it is extremely large. And when it comes to actually converting and remapping all those color values down to something of a more reasonable size that you can actually print out on a photographic printer or an inkjet, for example, you may have some difficulty with um, specific colors that are essentially being clipped and you can't reproduce them. So that's the only problem with working with an extremely large working space is, is the issue of being able to remap all those color values and actually convert them and print them uh, in order to get a reasonable result. Now, one specific technique that I'd like to quickly show you with regards to assigning profiles is that you can actually uh, increase and decrease the saturation of an image by utilizing the assign to profile um, feature of Photoshop. So I'm just going to quickly open up a new image. And we'll open that up. And we'll use the embedded profile. And I'm just going to drop this back to one image. And the way this works is essentially <coughs> um, you can actually get chroma variant profile sets, which are almost identical color profiles, except for they have a slight variation in chroma, which is a facet of the lab color space uh, mode, which I'm not going to go into too much detail, but essentially chroma it represents your color, which you can increase and decrease, which will essentially give you more saturation or less saturation. And you can do this by assigning a profile and actually gives you a better color rendition than that of utilizing the hue and saturation adjustment inside of Photoshop. So to quickly show you what I'm talking about is if I was to convert this image, which is currently sitting in Adobe RGB, so I went to edit and we went to convert to profile, and I convert it to sRGB, for example, and we'll leave it set to perceptual and use black point conversation. I click OK. What we could do then is actually assign a new color profile to the image, which is larger than sRGB. So if I go here and we assign Adobe RGB, you'll notice that the saturation of the image has increased and it's actually looking quite nice and also it's got a bit more clarity and a little bit more contrast in the image. Now obviously a pro photo RGB is way too big and you don't want to use that but with chroma variant profile sets you can do increments of 5-10% with regards to the saturation and they can actually look quite good so there's a little tip, a little technique that you can utilize to actually get uh, better saturation in your images just by assigning profiles.